Thank you for watching, liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing right now. Uh, Geeks Without Bounds is an organization which uh, aims to link up hacker and maker communities to existing humanitarian organizations. So we're a sort of toolbox that uh, creates better tools for first responders. We also help improve tools that exist. Uh, we hold a lot of events, so uh, geeks have a way of getting involved with uh, disaster response and also developing world problems. Um, it really empowers people to take an active role in, in their environment. So, so the geeks have to be social and not just, you know, living in their, their parents' basement? They get out and go see the sun and care about other people? Uh, I think that assumption about geeks is, is a fallacy. Um, I think most of them are actually pretty social and if you give them a chance to be uh, excited about what they're passionate about, um, they're, they're pretty good at relating to other people. Well, clearly we're, I mean, we're at a conference, so that, yeah, that must be the you case. Know, it's been good. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and we're at a conference called OzCon, and why, why did you pick OzCon to, to come to? Um, well, OzCon is an open source uh, convention. Um, I think uh, open source uh, as a concept um, is really critical, especially in, um, in the humanitarian um, crisis and disaster response. Uh, because uh, there's a certain amount of trust with open source because anybody can go in and look at the code. And it also ties in with the concepts of the um, open data and open communities as well. Um, and so um, I'm talking here on Thursday about some of the open source tools that um, people have been, you know, have been developed and are continuing to be developed that are used and have been used in actual crisis response, like Ushahidi, which was used, um, initially developed uh, in Af you know, for response to violence in Africa, but uh, was used extensively in Haiti, um, and more recently in, uh, in Christchurch uh, with the earthquakes there, and, and, um, and also be talking about uh, Frontline SMS and OpenStreetMap and Sahana and some of the other tools like those that have been developed that, uh, that people are using and they're actually saving lives. Is it fair to say that you're filling a need that commercial organizations aren't really filling, that because it's open source and doesn't have all the licensing issues that you can fill needs that are not being met because there's not enough commercial you know, money to be spent on those or those organizations don't have the money to do it? Um, when, when there is a crisis, um, it's almost too late to have these tools developed and um, and there are some tools that have been commercially developed and, and are being used, but um, these uh, sort of grew organically out of situations where they were needed, and uh, you and that's really hard to um, commercialize. It's it's hard to commercialize a response to um, a tsunami. Uh, so it, it it I think that. There have been some open source tools that developed into commercial applications, and there's definitely um, companies who make money uh, consulting on how to best implement those tools. But um, I don't think that uh, that necessarily um, replaces a commercial application. They're different needs. <laughs> It's also that uh, the open source community is used to getting involved and they, they already understand the mechanics of a lot of the tools that have been built and how to take an active role in building new ones. And so just the mindset itself of open source is what leads volunteer efforts because everyone can do something. And, and you're having quite a few events coming up where you're going to be doing hackathons and building tools and speaking to the open source community and other communities because I got a nice little responder mail that says I'm never going to be home again and so track me down and so where are you going to be? Um, after this I'll be in Detroit for Maker Faire. Um, so we'll be doing Space Camp, which is all the attending hacker and maker spaces will be in one area so the facilitators can get to know each other and we can brainstorm on some things that we can build with each other. Um, there will be a panel about Geeks Without Bounds and the uh, making with purpose, so creating things that don't just have blinky lights, but now what can you do with that? So things like SafeCast with the uh, radiation detector built off of an Arduino. It's brilliant. and. Um, so there's that, and then we'll be in 
uh, at DEF CON, where I am not speaking, but I will be infecting brains, which is what I do. Uh, and then Berlin for Chaos Computer Camp, which is uh, what spawned the, happens every four years. The last one was in 2007. It's what spawned the sudden influx of hacker and maker spaces in America. And so kind of giving an overview of what we've been up to and how, while we're not as political as spaces in Germany and the UK, we do have purpose. Like We, we are doing things that help other people um, and how we're tying that into education. And then it'll be at Uncivilization Camp, which is basically, the world is ending, but what are we going to do about it? Um, <laughs> uh, very uh, pessimistic, but very intelligent people. Uh, then I get to come home for three days before I go to Burning Man mm -hmm. um, for my first time, which will not be work. And <laughs> though I'm sure... We're doing an open source project as part of Dirk Burning Man. So, um, so Voxeo uh, is partnering up with OpenBTS. They have the uh, uh, GSM stack that um, is open source. And we're, uh, they've brought Open OpenBTS to Burning Man for a number of years now um, to let people communicate on the playa. Um, and uh, so for the first time, uh, Voxeo is coming in, or Voxeo Labs actually has a project that um, we're going to build some applications uh, beyond normal text messaging and voice, some group type applications uh, to simulate the type of things you get with like GroupMe. So you can find your other friends on the playa um, and, uh, and you know, it's, it's a, basically a city that comes up in overnight. It's not for communicating outside the playa, it's just keeping them, you know, inside, so. Uh, Burning Man is a really great opportunity to do a test run of a lot of uh, a lot of applications and infrastructures that have been built because it's the only place that you can really have that many people that would be involved and also have the complete lack of communications and so you get to try a lot of things out which sort we're really like excited about. Simulated disaster area. <laughs> I, I was just going to say having to bend to Burning Man it's kind of like a giant refugee camp <laughs> in terms of water and heat and yeah. and sanitation. So it's a good test bed for you know it's a test bed for artists to show their art and, and some you know geeks to show their technology too. We're, we're just testing it for ourselves to take and we'll take it back and see what worked and didn't work and and you know improve upon it next year so after that is state of the map which is a uh, open street map conference thing i think they also talk about ushihiri sahana other crisis mapping, um, crisis mapping stuff um and then after that is maker fair new york where we're doing similar things and and then i get to go home for a little bit, which is very exciting. But we're also working on right now ways for volunteers and possibly fellows at some point to be able to, to come on with us and, and have continued effort, because that's a big thing that you run into in both humanitarian response and volunteer efforts, and also in just geek communities in general, is the, is the sustaining of uh, the things that have been built. And so that's one of the things that inspires me so much about OzCon is that these are open source tools that a lot of people have started participating with on a whim or because they wanted one thing built that was very specific and have created whole communities and, and operating systems and everything else on top of. And those sustained efforts are what we can use in the future to uh, better deal with living on a planet that, that moves. <laughs> Yeah, we, um, one of the big things, that, the challenges that we have, and we, we um, since we started um, about a year ago at, at um, kind of uh, pre-launched at Gnome Dex and then uh, last October we officially launched, um, but we've we hosted a lot of hackathons and one of the challenges is you, know, you get a lot of people together, um, everyone's excited for a weekend and you build some stuff, um, but it's really challenging to build something that is usable in a weekend. So um, the, the challenge that we are facing now is how do we how do we bridge between the hackathons and keep projects going? And it's it's a very similar challenge that the open source community has. Um, they'll have you know uh, I heard one guy talking about drive-by contributors. So and, and then he was saying it's really hard to build. You, you can't really find a successful open source uh, platform or application that was built that way. You really need long-term contributors who, who can contribute resources and time um, and, and, and uh, brain power over long periods of time. And so we're trying to tackle that more on a, on a structural level so the, the hackathons have more value and more meaning in the long term. And if someone wants to, to join the community long term, what's the website that they need to go to? 
Geekwob.org. Geekswithoutbounds.org. Gwob. <laughs> or as we say, Gwaborg. <laughs> okay. Well, it was great talking with you, you both. So thank you, Johnny and Willow. Thank you. Thanks. Locker Gnome coverage of OSCON is brought to you by HP.